Hi, I'm Becky Safe. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And today I'm going to show you two key things that you need to know in order to get the most out of your music and improve your workflow in Ableton Live 11. And that is to convert audio to MIDI and MIDI to audio. So both of those techniques in this video. Before I get into it though, if you want to check out my Twitch streams, I do music production three times a week on twitch.tv forward slash Becky Safe. And we do have a Discord community as well, full of music producers. So if you want to join that, the links to both of those are below. Cool. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can convert drums, harmony, and melody into MIDI tracks. They kind of work in the same way. You go to the top and you right click and you come down to this menu here, convert harmony, convert melody, and convert drums to new MIDI track. Click on it and it's gonna slice the drum loop into transients inside a default drum rack. So the first loop, I'm just gonna play it for you. You can hear the difference. And then if we go on to the sliced up MIDI version, you can hear that it's taken the groove and it's added the MIDI onto default drum samples in the drum rack. So they're not the drum samples from the original audio file. But the great thing about this is you can now add your own drum samples onto the drum pads in the bottom left corner here. So if we go to effects, I'm just gonna find a kick drum, uh, a sample of my own. So something like that onto the kick pad. And we can go for a snare drum. So that, I'm just picking random drum hits. But now if we play it. So you can hear that it's added those drum samples into the drum rack. The great thing about slicing drums to a drum sampler is that you can maintain the groove, but you can also add in your own drum samples and not only take the groove, but make the drum break your completely own unique drum rack, which is really, really cool. Super cool. Love to do that. All right. So the next thing is to do harmony. So you go to the top of the harmony file. So let me just play it for you so you can hear what what we're working with. So it's chords and that's what you would do when you convert harmony. So if anything has chords in it in the audio file, you would go to the top and go down to convert harmony to new MIDI track. So this is what we have and it's just using Ableton's default instruments. So now if we play it, And you can hear that it's not got it exactly right. So you can double click on the file just to check. And you can see that a couple of these notes here just need to be re-edited. Like this one here, this belongs to the first chord. This one overlaps the second chord. This is a double note. So you're just going in and you're editing the MIDI notes so that they match what the original audio file was. So something along the lines of that. Now, the thing with doing chords is you probably want them to be on grid. So you can do Command and A to select all. You can right click to quantize or Command and U and it's going to quantize to the grid. So let's play it now. And this one needs to come back as well. So that's almost around the same as what we had in the original audio file. Now, if you wanted to use your own third party instrument on this track, remember MIDI is just information and the instrument that we have on here is Ableton's default. So if you want to switch it up, you just select on the instrument and delete. And then you can go into your own plugins and you can find a suitable instrument. So I'm going to go for Keyscape, drag Keyscape onto the MIDI track. And now we can select our own piano. Cool. 
Oh, so you have the harmony from the audio file, but now you have a completely new instrument that you can tailor make to your own sound and your own style and your own track, which is super cool. And the next thing is we want to convert the melody. Now, melody is copyright. So you want to be really careful with melody. You go to convert melody to new MIDI track, and then you probably want to start switching up the melody so that it doesn't sound like the original file, unless you're getting your files from splice or loop cloud when they're copyright free so this is the melody line let's just play the original audio file so this is the one that's now converted to the midi track and then you would go into here and you could maybe just start to shift up the notes change them up And again, the same with the harmony is you can delete the instrument and you could add in your own instrument onto this MIDI track. And now you have a completely unique sound. And if you wanted to quantize it, remember command and A and quantize so that you have them on the grid. Once you've got it converted, you could also press fold and it's going to fold the notes so that you're only working with the notes that you've taken from the audio file. Really handy technique and it just removes all the unnecessary notes that aren't in the scale that you're working with. Another good technique to use is use the MIDI effects. And if you go down to scale and you go on to minor, and just select the scale that you know the audio file is, and then it's going to shift the notes. If they're not in this MIDI file, if they're not in the right key, it's gonna shift them into the key that you've told the MIDI track to move into. So those are the different ways that you can slice drums, harmony and melody to your own MIDI tracks and insert your own instruments and get the same rhythm and same groove out of the audio files. OK, so the next thing we want to do is we want to take MIDI and turn it into audio. So here's a project that I started the other day. And we're going to take this drum and bass break 54 that is sliced to a MIDI track and we're going to now convert it back into audio. And the reason why you do this is one, to save CPU and two, it actually helps with workflow because once you commit something to audio, you don't actually have to think about it anymore and go back and start tweaking things and unnecessarily spending your time just obsessively tweaking and tweaking and tweaking because that is something that if you have a load of MIDI tracks you will find yourself doing. So this drum and bass break which is sliced to a MIDI track I'm pretty happy with this now. So one way that you can commit this to audio is if you right click on the track and you go to freeze track and then you go down and you do the same thing but flatten track and now it's committed to audio. And you can see that none of the plugins that I had on that track are there. They're completely gone, disappeared from existence. And now I have this to work with. But maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you want to keep that MIDI track because you do want to go back to it from time to time. So I'm going to press undo. And now we have the frozen MIDI track. Create a new audio track, so Command and T. And instead of flattening this track, we just select it, we hold down on Alt and we drag down onto the audio track. And now you have your frozen MIDI track, which is saving your CPU, but we also have the new audio track so that we can work with the audio and just hide that one. And we've just got the audio to work with. Again, the same with no plugins on the chain. And if you do ever want to go back to this MIDI track, you can go here, click on it and 
unfreeze the track and now you can work with the track once it's frozen you can't work with it you can't do any automation or any editing of these plugins it, no matter how many times you try and click on them or open up that window i don't know why <laughs> but no, no matter how many times you click on it you can't do anything and you can't add anything to that track so i'm just going to unfreeze it i'm going to delete this audio track and the other thing you can do is you can resample your groups. So this is a drum group here. So let's create a new audio track. So right click down here and insert audio track. And if you drag down on the bottom, so you're opening up all the options here and you click on external in, you can go to resampling, press the little record arm button and then solo the drums, which they already are. And you can see that there's a gray bar jumping up and down here, which means that it's now set up for resampling. All you need to do is press record at the top. And this is our drum file. So if we press solo on that, now, if you wanted to save this file in your computer and export it, you can either drag it up to one of your folders and let go, and then you can save it there, or you could export the audio. And in order to export the audio, you select the duration of the file. You press Command and L so that it loops the area that you want to export. You go to File, Export Audio and Video. Make sure it's on solo mode, so it's only soloing that channel, because otherwise you would have to come down and select a track from here. But as long as you've got it on solo, you know that that's coming out of the master. And then you just press Export and you would save it onto your computer as you would save a bounced project. And that is how you would save audio. If you want to be destructive by flattening it, if you don't want to be destructive, but you want to freeze your tracks, or if you want to resample a group and then also save it into your computer. Converting audio to MIDI and MIDI to audio. That is your tutorial for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more content. Drop me a comment below to let me know what you thought. And if you want to join me in the production streams, it's twitch.tv forward slash Becky safe and I'll see you for another video.